Welcome back to the Network Engineer Diaries. Today we are going to talk about something very important for the network engineers, the Open Systems Interconnect model, the OSI model. The OSI model was introduced by the Organization for Standardization, ISO, in 1984. And it serves the purpose of defining how computers communicate if we have as you can see on this diagram if we have a sending computer and it wants to send say an email to a receiver say in another city or another office or a different network the sending computer is going to go through these seven layers of encapsulating the data so that it can be transmitted over to the receiving computer either via the air wirelessly by radio waves or through a cable like optic fiber or copper wire. The OSI model has seven layers Layer number seven, there is application layer. Six, presentation layer. At number five, session layer. At number four, transportation layer. At number three, network layer. At number two, data layer. And number one, physical layer. The application layer, it provides services to the network applications like Chrome, Firefox, Outlook, email, etc. There are many application layer protocols and they perform various services. For instance, for file transfer, FTTP is used. HTTP is used for web surfing. SMTP is used for emails. And Telnet is used for virtual terminal. If we look back on the diagram, you can see the various layer 7 protocols that exist DHCCP, DNS, FTP, HTTP, IMAP4, NNTP, etc. etc. Once the application layer is finished, it passes the data down to the presentation layer. The presentation layer is going to receive the data that's in character and number format, like something like this, or some sort of text and number format. And it's going to translate that into binary format. And the binary format is what the computer is going to understand. And it's going to look like this with ones and zeros. For example, it detects the ASCII and translates that into the ABCDIC code. The other function of the presentation layer is to compress the data into some into smaller files. Let's say if you have 10 megabyte file, it's going to compress that into something like 3 megabytes so that the file to transfer is a little bit smaller and easier to transmit. And this is very essential in real time functions like audio or video streaming and then after the compression is over it's going to encrypt the data using different encryption protocols like secure socket layer SSL or WEP or WPA security protocols. Once that process is over it's going to transfer that data down to the next layer the session layer. The session layer layer number five it sets up and terminates connections with the help of application programming interfaces, APIs. For example, an example of an API is NetBIOS, Network Basic Input Output System. The way NetBIOS works is it's going to do the authentication. It's going to take the password and username into account before it gives the user access, say, to the server. And then the authorization, it's going to check whether you have permission to access the file on that server. Then 
It also does session management. It keeps track of the files that are being downloaded in the form of text or images called packets to determine where they go. For example, if they're going to the browser or your email uh, outlook, etc., etc. Once this process is done, it passes the data down to the next layer, the transport layer. Transport layer is layer number four, performs three functions. The first one is segmentation. The transport layer takes the data packets that it has received from the session layer and it divides that into smaller data units called segment. Each segment has a port number and a sequence number. A port number helps direct a segment to the right application. For example, port 80, that tells the application that it's for HTTP. Port 21 is for FTP. And also it provides the sequence number to the segment. Sequence number, it helps in reassembling the segment so that the receiver receives the full message. The second function of the transportation layer is flow control. Let's say we have a server and a cell phone. The cell phone wants to receive data from the server, but the server has the bandwidth of 100 megabytes per second, but the cell phone can only process 10 megabytes per second. So the cell phone is going to communicate with the server and and it's going to tell it to reduce the speed of transmission down to 10 megabytes per second because that's what the cell phone can process. The error control is the third function of the transport layer is error control. It happens that there are missing or corrupted data. Okay, so the transport layer is going to request for the missing or corrupted data to be retransmitted. It uses the automatic repeat request scheme. There are two protocols used in the transportation layer. There is TCP, which stands for Transmission Control Protocol. And then there is User Datagram Protocol, UDP. TCP differs from UDP in the fact that it uses a three-way handshake, meaning it's going to send the request for synchronization. And the other end is going to acknowledge that and the reply back to the, to the request. And then the sender is going to acknowledge that it has received the reply back from the receiver. You see there is three messages going across between the sender and the receiver. And this is very essential for, for quality data delivery. Let's say in emails or web surfing where quality of the data is a must. TCP is a connection oriented transmission for that purpose. On the other hand, there is connectionless transmission by UDP, and this is used in streaming movies online, songs, or voice over IP. And here, three-way handshake is not considered necessary because it's going to delay the transmission. At this stage, it's called segments, okay? The transportation layer is going to send those segments down to the layer below, and this is the network layer at number three. Layer three, the network layer, the data units at this level, they're called packets. Why? Because the network layer is going to perform three things, three functions. It's going to provide logical addressing, meaning it's going to assign IP addresses of the sender and the intended receiver. Like if we have computer A from office one or from home one, of 192.168.5.2 slash 225.225.225.0 submask. Let's say the computer wants to access Netflix on another computer server B at an address of 192.168.11.1.7 with a subnet mask of 225.225.225.0. The two addresses, IP addresses, the sending address, IP address, and the receiver IP address, those two are added to the segment, okay? Now, the router is going to send this packet across the internet. It knows which path to take because it can read the IP address and know which network the receiver computer is located in. It determines which path to use by using the different routing protocols like open shortest path first ospf enhanced interior gateway routing protocol eigrp rip bgp is-is once the network layer is done 
it's going to send that packet down to the next layer below and the next layer is that third link layer the data link layer is going to receive the data packet from the network layer and it's going to add the mac address the media access control address of the sending computer and the receiving computer the mac address has the format of 12 characters letters and digits every network interface card in the world has a unique mac address and then once the packet and the receiving once the sending and the receiving mac addresses are added to the packet this is called a frame and the physical layer is going to perform two functions framing and media access control and error detection and then it's going to send the frame to the next layer the physical layer now the physical layer converts those frames the ones and zeros the bits the computer binary code into a signal and that signal is going to be transmitted over the physical media the physical media include copper wire for electric signal and optic fiber for the light or the other media air radio signal okay the signal is going to be transmitted through these three medias all the way to the receiving intended receiving computer okay and now the receiving uh, computer is going to start the process of decapsulation the signal is going to travel from the sending computer all the way through the internet whether it's a radio wave or satellite link or optic fiber all the way to the receiving computer and then the process of decapsulation over on the receiving side is going to start okay now the physical layer is going to take that signal that just arrived and change that into a binary format ones and zeros so that the computer can process that information once it's done it's going to pass the physical layer is going to pass pass on the bits those frames to the the physical layer and the physical layer is going to remove the sending mac address and the receiving mac address and it's going to send that to the next layer the network layer as a packet now the network layer is going to check the sending ip address and the receiving ip address and then it's going to remove those ip addresses off of the packet and it's going to send that packet now it's called a segment over to the transportation layer the transportation layer is going to check which port it is intended if it's 80 it's http it's 21 it's a file transfer and so on and so on once that is complete of course remember it's going to also check and make sure the flow control is done properly and error recovery if there is any error if it's tcp or udp in use and then it's going to send that segment now it's a data to the next layer above the session layer the session layer is going to authenticate that and authorize the access to to that request and then that is sent to the next layer above presentation layer presentation layer decrypts the message removes the encryption and then it decompresses the message back the original size and then it translates the data from the binary back to the characters a b c d and, and digit character now at this stage presentation layer sends the data above to the application layer and the application layer is going to call on one of these application layer protocols if it's http web surfing or smtp if it's an email that it's being sent and then the application layer protocol is going to present to the computer network application like chrome firefox or your email outlook that may message in readable human language like letters and numbers and then the message is going to be displayed on the receiving computer if you send a message via email saying hello that message is going to be displayed now on the receiving computer when now you know how the osi model work congratulations i'll see you in the next video consider subscribing commenting sharing or please hit the notification bell thank you